My name is Reese Alvroy. I took the SAT yesterday with my students. And here are the three hardest math questions that I saw on the test. Now, out of respect for College Board, these aren't the exact questions, but they're very similar versions to what I saw on the test. They test the same concepts. Number one, the equation above has one solution. What is the value of L? When I see fractions like these, my mind immediately goes to multiplying these fractions out of the denominator. So if we multiply this entire equation by 116 LX on both sides, it's gonna be 116 equals LX squared plus 116X. If this equation has one solution, what is the value of L? Well, this is just a quadratic, and if you take the 116 over to this side, what you'll notice is that you can use b squared minus 4ac, which is the discriminant, and set it equal to zero, and plug in all of your values. Now, why did we do this? What even is this? b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant is part of the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula looks like this. And this, the part inside of here, all it determines is if a quadratic or a parabola has solutions, meaning does it cross the x-axis? A parabola can only cross the x-axis two times, one time, or zero. In this case, we are saying, or this problem is saying, that this equation has one solution, meaning this quadratic only touches the x-axis once. So that means we have to set this equal to zero. If a quadratic has more than one solution, then it has to be greater than zero. If a quadratic has no solutions, then b squared minus 4ac equals, I mean, is less than zero. As long as you have these discriminant rules memorized, you'll be able to solve the rest of this problem. In this case, b equals 116, a equals l, right? Because this is the a value. And then c equals negative 116. Here's what we're gonna do. 116 squared minus four l, negative 116 equals zero. I'm gonna show you a trick on Desmos really quick. So let's hop over there. By the way, if you head over to dsctmath.com, I will tutor you for free until your next test. A lot of students, what they do is they'll do minus four X times negative 116. And then they will set this equal to zero. Where's my equal sign? There we go. Okay. And then they'll zoom in and out of the graph, right? It's a little harder on a laptop and they'll find this point. What I want you to do is instead of doing this, change this to L or any variable other than X and Y. So let me grab L and then change this to a tilde and it will give you the answer right there instead of having to zoom in and out of the graph and read it. Sometimes Desmos doesn't even allow you to read off the graph. If it's like an irrational number or something, it doesn't even allow you to find that point. It's really annoying. So just do it this way. Well, we get L equals negative 29. That's the value of L when the equation has one solution because this is really just a parabola in a different, in a weird, unique form. Let's move on to number two. Number two, the perimeter of a right isosceles triangle is 256 plus 256 root two. What is the length of the hypotenuse? What even is a right isosceles triangle? First of all, let's start with an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is a triangle with two sides that are the same. That's it. Meaning that an equilateral triangle is an isosceles triangle, but not all isosceles triangles are equilateral. Now, what does right isosceles triangle mean? Well, it just means a right triangle that has the same two sides. That's what you need to know for this question. Now, here's where it gets tricky. For 3D shapes, right means something a little different. If we think of like a right, R-I-G-H-T, prism, what a right prism or a right 3D shape would mean on the SAT is simply that the height is perpendicular 
to its base. So for example, a cone, a right cone, the height would be perpendicular to the circle base. And for a pyramid, this height would be perpendicular to its square base. This is what right means for a 3D shape. It means the height is perpendicular to its base. In this case, you could also think of the height being perpendicular to the base, right? With that out of the way, this should be a lot easier. What you need to know about this special triangle, this special right isosceles triangle, is that it's also a special triangle. It's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And this is on your SAT. You get it in the cheat sheet. You don't need to memorize this. Just click the button on top right of blue book and you'll be able to access it at any time on the math sections. I don't know why you would need it on the English sections. <laughs> if you have this 45, 45, 90 triangle, this is what the proportions of the sides look like. It's always going to look like this. The two legs are gonna be the same, obviously, because it's an isosceles triangle. And then the hypotenuse is going to be a root two. The reason why it looks this way is because it's half of a square. You could think of it that way, just a square cut in half. Okay, where do we even go from here? If you know your special right triangles, this is gonna be really easy because you just take the perimeter, which is what you need, a plus A plus A root two, and you set it equal to the perimeter you were given. 256 plus 256, oh, square, oh man, that's brutal. All right, still figuring out the side pad. I'm gonna get it one day. From here, just put it in Desmos. I'll show you. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put the tilde right here. What do we even do from here? Well, what does the question ask? Refer back to the question when you're confused. What is the length of the hypotenuse? So the hypotenuse is a root two. We don't need a, so we don't exactly need to know what this 181.01934 is. I think a is technically 128 root two. Yeah, if you use the variables, it will just, Desmos will fill it in for you. And then you multiply that by the square root of two and it gives you the answer right here. So I want you to know how to use Desmos effectively so that you can get these answers very quickly. A root two, which is the hypotenuse, equals 256, and that is our answer. Two lines intersect at exactly one point, forming two obtuse angles and two acute angles. If one of the angle measures is seven X minus 80 degrees, which of the following could not represent the sum of any two of these angles? Let's make this seven X minus 80. Doesn't really matter which one it is. First of all, guys, for the love of God, draw your diagrams. Do not try to do this in your head. This angle would also be 7x minus 80, right? Which of the following could not represent the sum of any two of these angles? First of all, we know D is immediately wrong because these two angles right here, they add up to 180 because they're on a straight line and so do the ones on the other side of the line. A is also wrong because if you take this original angle that we were given, the 7x minus 80, and you multiply it by two, we get 14x minus 160, which is exactly what a is. Meaning, the sum of this angle and itself, because this is also on the other side, is 14x minus 160. What you want to do to narrow down between b and c is find whatever this angle is. So what is this angle? It's 180 minus 7x minus 80. And make sure you have these parentheses Please do that, or otherwise you're gonna get the question wrong. 180 minus 7x plus 80, seven, negative 7x plus 260. Now, all we want to do from here is since we multiplied this first angle times two to get this, we're gonna do the same for this. So we're gonna multiply this times two, and as you can see, B cannot work because we just got it right here. C is the only one that does not represent the sum of any two angles. So if you're looking for a simple explanation for why C is the answer, if we label this angle A and angle B, then this would be angle B and angle A, right? And angle A plus B is always going to be 180, no matter what A or B you select. 2A is going to equal 14X minus 160, because A is 7X minus 80. 2B is going to equal 
where is it? Negative 14 plus 520. Because B is negative 7x plus 260. There is no possible way to add A and B or A and A or B and B to get 14x plus 520. All right, one last message for you. I will tutor you for free until your next test. How that's gonna work is basically I'm gonna hop on a call with you for um, 30 minutes, like twice per week, all the way up until your test. And it's all free. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I honestly just need more experience, more testimonials, more success stories until I feel comfortable charging for my services. Currently, I'm a tutor with College Board. They're a nonprofit, and it's also all volunteer work over there. And if you're wondering, yes, I do specialize in the SAT math. That's where I'm best at. That's where I can help you the most. Other than that, good luck on your SATs. Good luck on your AP tests, because I know those are around this time too. I'm rooting for you.